Hey guys, this is Dimitri with Joe's Gaming and Electronics, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the power button on your iPad Pro 4. We do offer and provide a mail-in repair service, so if you want to send your iPad in for a repair, you can fill out the repair form. The link will be down in the description, as well as we do sell parts and all the tools that you'll see me using in this video. We do have them available on our website. The links will be down in the description below. So for this specific iPad, we're going to be replacing the power button. If you look right here, where the power should the power button should be sticking out, it is sunk in there, and there's no way of turning this iPad on. So for this repair, you're going to need a heat gun. I'm going to be running it at 200 degrees Celsius, and you're going to need four pry tools. We do have these available on our website, so if you're looking to do this repair by yourself, you're more than welcome to check out our website. The links will be all provided down in the description below. So I went ahead, flipped the iPad over. So I have the volume up and down with the power button right here. I'm going to go ahead and start by heating this side up and prying it up where the power buttons are or the volume up and down buttons are. So I'm just going to go ahead, get my pick in there and just start heating it up a little bit. Make sure you're not applying heat directly to the screen that you're going back and forth because this is a good screen so we're not trying to ruin the LCD or burn the screen. So once we got it to pry up just a little bit we're gonna go ahead and substitute the metal pick with a plastic one. So this side right here <clears throat> is the one side you don't want to pry in too deep because the LCD is not that far from the edge. So this is the one side that you want to be really careful and mindful of when you heat up and you run the pry pick between the housing and the LCD. And if you ever get to a point where the pick just comes out instead of starting all the way from the top what we're going to do is we're just going to take the metal pry tool we're going to go ahead and lift the screen up just a tad bit enough to get the plastic clip back in all right so once you get to the bottom right here you could go ahead and take that pick out and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, stand our iPad up, and we're simply gonna start applying a little bit more heat to the top while prying the pick a little bit. It's super hard to get this to focus in the camera. We're gonna go ahead and turn up our air output to 115 for this process still 200 degrees Celsius so what I'm doing here is I just simply have my uh, fingernails in between the housing and the screen and I'm just kind of peeling I'm prying it a little bit out as I'm heating it up just to create that separation So you wanna you wanna keep going until you at least get it to peel open up to the bottom corner. Once you do that, go ahead and start working on the other side where you have the volume up and down button. So go ahead and now work on this side. Just simply try to get like your fingernails or at least your fingers in there and pry the screen lightly up from the housing. And while you're doing that, you're just applying some heat Make sure you're going back and forth so that you're not directing heat into one place only. Perfect. Once you've made it to this corner, be mindful not to pry this too much. As you can see right there, we have the face ID ribbon. You wanna make sure that does not rip, so don't 
pry the screen too far from the housing. Um, all we have is the bottom half left to do. So we're gonna go ahead and just start heating that up. We already broke the adhesive with the pry tool or the pick, whatever you wanna call it. So just simply uh, prying with your fingers and applying a little bit of heat should be enough to get the screen to peel off from the housing. So once we got to this po uh, point, we're gonna go ahead and peel the screen off. Right now the iPad is upside down and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and pull the screen back to expose the face ID ribbon and we're gonna be using a 2.0 Phillips plus screwdriver. We do have these available on our website. Link for that will be included down in the description. We're gonna go ahead and remove the two screws. And for this power button replacement, we're actually going to remove the screen. It's going to be easier and we have to also reapply adhesive. So once we've done that, go ahead and use a plastic spudger to disconnect the face ID from the motherboard. Once we've done that, go ahead, fold your screen in halfway and pop it open like so. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these five little screws. Once those five screws are removed, go ahead and peel this cover off. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and disconnect our display ribbons and then the touch LCD ribbon as well. Once we've done that, go ahead, grab the screen, put that aside in a safe place where it's not going to fall or get damaged any further. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to peel all the old adhesive off the iPad housing using a Phillips flathead screwdriver. It's a 1.5. We do have these available on our website as well. So I'm going to go ahead while the adhesive is still warm, pry it off because then it gets a little bit more difficult to remove as it cools off. I'm actually going to go ahead and take the gloves off for this process just to make it a little quicker because the adhesive loves to stick to gloves. So we'll go ahead and rock it with no gloves. Now that all the adhesive is off, I'm just going to go ahead and run the pointy part of the spudger around the edges of the iPad just to get any excess gunk out of the way. All right, once you get all that gunk out, go ahead and just clean the edges of the iPad. Make sure that there's nothing in the way so that when we apply a new adhesive, the screen will sit flush on the housing. All righty. So good enough. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and take our Phillips screwdriver and we're going to remove a few screws that we have here. We're going to go ahead, take out these ones on this cover right here. So once we get this metal plate removed, go ahead, grab your spudger and disconnect the ribbon right here. And also right here, like so. Once you've done that, go ahead and remove the black Phillips plus screw that's right up top where the power button is. There should be two of them. If you do have tweezers, tweezers do work really well to get small screws out as well as magnetizing your screwdriver. 
we're gonna go ahead and pull this last little screw right there. Once we've done that, go ahead and pull the power button out. I'll be right back after I go get some tweezers to remove that little screw there. All right, so once we remove the old button, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, grab our new button, and we're gonna go ahead and just place it right there. And we're gonna go ahead and secure it with the screws up top. Get that screw installed. Go ahead and do the second one. And we're gonna go ahead and do the last one right up top where we have that little antenna. Once we got those screws installed, go ahead and plug these ribbons back in. Just simply place your thumb over the top and push down. You should feel it clip right in. Do the same for the one down below. Once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and take our little plate and we're gonna install it back into place. Then go ahead and fasten it down with the screws. That's the problem and dilemma. These screws are very small. If you drop them, you're not gonna find them. But it's A-OK. -okay. One screw isn't really gonna cause, isn't gonna cause no harm. It just holds down the plate, which four screws is just as good as five, but not better, but just as good. So once we got that all installed and screwed back on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and apply new adhesive. We're gonna use some double-sided tape. We do have this available on our website as well. Link will, uh, the link will be down in the description below. So what I like to do is the wider tape goes on the right side of the iPad. We're just gonna go ahead, put it right on the edge and with our spudger, we're just gonna go ahead and run it so that it actually sits down and is being held on the iPad. And what I like to do with the spudger is I like to round it out into the corners like this. And then we'll grab our knife. We'll go ahead and cut it away. So that is nice and flush. And we're gonna do the same to this side. Round it in with our spudger, grab our knife, cut the excess away like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the bottom of the iPad. Same thing with the spudger, just kind of run it along the tape, get it to the corner, round it, knife, cut. And now we're gonna use the thinner tape and we're gonna go ahead and do the top and the left side. For this one up top, we're only getting the adhesive up to the camera. We're gonna cut it right there. And then right at this one, that's where we're gonna start. Once we've done that, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and peel the top layer off to expose the stickiness of the adhesive. Once we've done that, right here where you have the volume up and down button, you have a little, it's kind of like a little divot in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some pliers or anything sharp and we're just gonna cut right there and right there as well, this is important. I'll explain why here in a minute. And then right here, where you have a little divot as well, or a trench, as I like to say, we're gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing. Bend that in. And we're gonna grab our screen. So 
these divots that we cut in and push the tape down is for these magnets that are on the screen so that they could sit down in there so that the screen is flush. We're gonna go set, set the screen right here and we're gonna plug in the touch ribbons. Just simply line these connectors up on these points and just push down on them. You should feel it clip in. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the display ribbons as well. Once those are plugged in, we're gonna go ahead and take the ribbon cover shield that we originally removed the first time, we're gonna go ahead and place it back into place. Out of the five screws, four screws are the same size. One of them is bigger than the others and the biggest screw goes right there, right into that one. And the other four that are left are the same size so it doesn't matter where they go. Once we got those screws in, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and flip this closed. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to take the face ID ribbon right here, and we're trying to plug it into this connection. It's very hard to capture this on video. I mean, this is probably the most difficult part of this repair, honestly to get this plugged back in. But once you do, go ahead and slide the screen forward like you did the first time when you were removing it. Place the ribbon cover back and go ahead and fasten it with the two screws. Once we got those two screws secure, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our screen, we're gonna go ahead, line it up in this bottom corner right there, and then we're gonna go ahead and line it up up, up top. Go ahead, drop the screen down, and with your finger, you can just simply push down on the edges of the iPad. Go ahead and just kind of do like a visual inspection. Take a peek through the sides, make sure that there's no screen or glass sticking up, that it's all flush with the housing. In this case, this one seems like it is good. So without further ado, that is how you replace the power button on your iPad Pro 4. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you guys love what we do, please support us. You guys can click on the links that we have on the end screen. You guys can buy parts, sales, or service so we can continue to make great videos for you guys for many more years. Thank you.